Thank you, Linda. How are you all? If you can hear me well and loud, please wave a big hello back to me. I'm hoping the ones who have switched off their videos too can hear me. There you go. Thank you, Joshila. I see that hand and I praise God for that. Okay, it's wonderful again to be in front of you guys like this and uh, just to have this avenue of technology to meet with each one of you through Zoom and YouTube. It is a privilege for me. So thank you for giving me this opportunity again to share what the Lord has put in my heart for you. Well, we can only say thank you to the Almighty for His abundant grace, protection and healing over ourselves, our friends and extended family. Will you agree with me? If you do, then let me encourage you to just take this time now and courageously raise your hand. It need not be your right hand. Just raise your hand above, look up and say, thank you, Jesus. Please go ahead. I encourage you to say, thank you, Lord. For we know he is amidst us, isn't it? He is here with us. He is Ebenezer, the rock of help. For thus far, he has brought us. But we are very much still in need of his healing as we are still dealing with this pandemic. Even though we have learned to live slowly through the pandemic by his grace and hopefully will come out of it too. Now I have titled my sharing today and I want to share my screen right now. Just give me a moment. Okay, can you see me? Wonderful. Thank you. All right. So today I have titled my sharing as past wounds and present scars. Now, not the typical healing of body alone, which we have prayed for just now before in the intercessory prayers. And we do need that healing too. Yes. But of our minds and heart too. Now there is so much power in forgiveness, so much healing in reconciliation and even realization. And ever more, it is the need of the hour as we live through these war ridden, as we see in Afghanistan. Disease afflicted, natural climate changing, intolerant, stuck with each other without freedom, and emotional high times. So let's take this opportunity and pray that the Lord will help us understand him deeper while we learn this important aspect of our spiritual life and live it out in this physical world. Please join with me in prayer. Father God Almighty, we come before you, O Lord, with an expectant heart, Abba Father. We thank you for your son Jesus and for his loving sacrifice on the cross. Father, even as we prepare our hearts, our minds and our soul, O Lord Jesus, to receive word from you, I pray for your peace that passes all understanding. I pray that you'll help us quieten our hearts and remove any distractions, Abba Father. Today, Lord, especially we pray even for the children, O Lord Jesus, give them your all peace, O Lord Jesus, in their hearts. Father, I pray, O Lord, that we'll be able to open up our ears and hearts and hear what you have to speak to us. Father, I pray and I commit our hearts to you, O Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that you, your Holy Spirit will minister unto each one of us, O Lord Jesus, even as your word is shared. Father, that you'll bring to light, O Lord, things that we have suppressed long ago, things that we might not have even realized, O Father. Lord, we pray, have your way, O Lord Jesus. Take firm control over this sharing, O Lord Jesus, and after. Father, I just bring myself to at this point of time. Father, as weak and prone to sin that I am, Father, I pray for that, for your purification. Father, I pray, O Lord, that your Holy Spirit will minister in and through me, O Lord Jesus. That, Lord, your word will reach to those needy, O Lord Jesus. That you'll meet us today at the point of our need, O Lord Jesus. Have your way. May you increase and may we decrease. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. Okay, so 
all through these two years and even before these two years, each of us have experienced some form of trials and pain. Now, some were excruciatingly by people whom we trusted and are closer to us as we were all forced into the reality of being at close quarters, sometimes even 24 hours a day, some at home, some at work, and some have experienced the pain of a lost loved one in the waves of COVID and regretted that we have left a lot unsaid. Now, we must have heard quotes like John Wooden's, the most important thing in the world is family and love. Yeah, we would have heard even quotes like this Burmese proverb, which said, in time of test, family is best. You've heard all of these thoughts, right? And many, many more. But through these past two years, whether we agree openly or not, our lives sometimes felt more like George Burns quote which says happiness is having a large loving caring close-knit family but in another city or that families are like fudge mostly sweet with a few nuts here and there or one of my favorites which I proudly display on a fridge magnet which says, my family tree is full of nuts. I'm sure you're smiling with me. Yes, nuts, but loving nuts. So, in general, my family, whether by our own family or by outsiders, through the pains, hurts and trials, we have learned to live lives that are wounded and scarred even before the past two years. We are constantly confronted with our wounds, but we press on forward. Now, whether we acknowledge them or not, our wounds and scars do change us, sometimes forever. Now, as they say, reality bites. We discovered that there are no perfect parents, no perfect siblings, children, grandparents or spouses no perfect jobs and definitely no perfect bosses and colleagues. Will you agree? We simply live in an imperfect world with imperfect human beings. Now, because of this, we are bound to step on each other's toes every so often. So, let's look today at why should we even think of this? Isn't the mantra of the world, when life gives us lemons, what do we make? We make? Anyone has heard that phrase? Let's make this an interactive session. I would love to hear your voices. When life gives us lemons, what does it say? Lemonade. Lemon juice. Let's make lemon juice or lemonade. Absolutely right. Now, shouldn't we just keep our head held high and just walk on, no matter how hurt or pain we feel? to show strength to the outside world? Now, some of us may even go on and quote scripture there and say, well, Jesus said, be at peace with everyone, so let it be. I'll pretend as if nothing happened and I'll get on with life. I will suppress my feelings, I will suppress the pain that I have and I will just stay quiet and I'll pretend everything will be all right. Is that the mantra? Will that work? No. Why do we need to deal with this? Well. Let me tell you why we need to deal with our past wounds and present scars and then later on we will deal with the how. So, why do we need to deal with this? Point number one. Well, people have an amazing memory when it comes to harsh words or painful experiences than the happy and encouraging ones. Now, would you agree? Now I know that men amongst us will say, yes, my wife has a superpower. She can remember the date and time of every time I criticize her cooking, but not the time I helped her peel potatoes in the kitchen all day long for her family who's visiting. Or the time I took her to a seven star all you can eat biryani buffet. She doesn't remember all those. Now, if you're smiling, my brothers, I see you and I feel you. And certainly my hubby will side with you. 
but contrary to popular belief both men and women do this but on a serious note Laura Carstensen now she is a psychology professor at Stanford University and she says something very interesting she says that negative emotions like hurt pain and fear trigger an increased activity in a part of our brain linked to memories now these emotionally charged memories are preserved in much greater detail than the happy or neutral ones and sometimes these are also subject to distortion unfortunately especially as time passes by so next time before we criticize our spouses that they don't remember the good things that they do we can blame it on science yeah so for example you must have heard of a few stories right from our uncles aunties grandparents bosses friends yeah about bad experiences they're told and retold over time by the same people changed in some details now usually they either tend to be more colorful or less detailed or have you ever noticed that a certain color or a smell or a certain word or phrase reminds us of our past experience with something and no matter how long ago you are taken right back to that place or date and time or to that person who was involved with you in that experience now like a nice bollywood number maybe a few of us can remember when which we related to in our dating time maybe in our honeymoon period when we hear that song even today we are taken back to those days isn't it or you say nasrapur and our dear old brother bertie can remind you of that years feast day to day activities that we have done in that year too now these my family are interestingly called as psychological triggers now these psychological triggers they either make us happy or sad depending on the experience now as humans more than the happy compliments painful words and hurts whether we say or do them to others or they're done to us hold the power to knock us down derail us as they sit and simmer in our minds for a long long time now they can cause us to be upset every time our triggers are activated they can make us react in ways that we would not want to now these sometimes can also create seemingly unresolvable rifts or separations between loved ones later on we notice that after some time has passed we kind of even lose focus about what the exact problem at that time was isn't it or sometimes we don't remember the exact details but by then there is a seemingly impossible distance between friends siblings families or colleagues and we are left hanging in mid air in how to close that gap we keep wondering how did we ever grow apart so much now if left alone we have lost an opportunity to show god's love or even worse become indifferent meaning we don't care anymore whether we have that friendship we have that relationship or not and would have completely killed any opportunity for reviving it have you ever had an experience like this now these kind of experiences or occurrences derail our future they become shackles to our feet in some or the other form without us realizing it never really going away from our way of progress this is exactly what the devil wants this is what the enemy feasts on and he wants it for our life to be captives of our own making sometimes as we tend to start believing those deceiving words now this is one of the major reasons my family that we have people who are depressed and even suicidal especially in teens because every time these triggers activate in our memories in our brain they just take us back to that wound even though we have a scar right now they tend to remind us again and again
Now I want to share with you a small um, a, a testimony, a true thing that happened in my life. Now this was in my childhood. I was in about 11th or 12th standard of school, yeah. And I remember a childhood, uh, childhood friend's mum. She told me that I should do something to become fair-skinned like her own daughter. And I was a little more wheatish than I am now. And she told me that I should do this if I want to get a good husband one day. And that, especially because I don't have a mom and I am a parent of a single child home, single parent home. Now those words made me realize that no matter how confident or satisfied I am within myself, the world sees me in a different light and with a different perspective. And it hurt me to no end. I went through some painful experiences of making the world like me and see me in a different light. Then slowly I realized that through this, I have lost me. I have lost my wonderful identity that God gave me and how he sees me. Instead, by constantly putting on the world's lens, I lost my joy for a while. My confidence and my closeness with God was on a back burner. And I totally avoided that good friend and her friendship, though, though it was not her fault, just because I did not want to see her mom. Until the day I realized, with God's help, how far I have fallen and how to deal with it and rise above. Thankfully, we put things behind us. It was not easy, my brothers and sisters. Today, I can happily say that she's still one of my very good friends. Now, past wounds and hurts can't be left alone. These kind of experiences need to be dealt with. They cannot come under the category of push it under the bed and live as if nothing happened. Because these experiences are never truly forgotten until we deal with them. Past wounds, though we get a scab over it and kind of heal somewhat, they turn into a scar and they tend to continually remind us because they itch, they itch again and again. And we are reminded every time the trigger activates. This is why we need to deal with them, point number one. Now let's go to point number two of why we need to deal with this. We sometimes are so loose with our words. Now, hurtful words said to us even jokingly can sometimes be very, very painful. And learning to let go of what others say about us can be a very hard road to walk. And the same goes when we say those hurtful words to others. Now, some people choose to purposefully use hurtful words towards us. It's hard to discern and understand why. But most of the time, it's because that person is dealing with their own insecurities and are projecting their own self-perceived failures onto us. Let me say that again. Some people choose to purposefully use hurtful words towards us. It's hard to understand why, but most of the time it's because that person themselves are dealing with their own insecurities and are projecting their self-perceived failures onto us. Now, I want to ask a hard truth question to ourselves, me and you. Yes, you heard me right. How many times have we said something negative about someone else to make ourselves look better or feel better in front of others? Now, we don't need to answer it here. But if we are being truthful before the Lord right now in His presence, because we know He is here, we are guilty of this at times. And I know that gut-wrenching, guilty feeling that comes over later on. Thankfully, the Lord helps me set things right and it's no walk in the park. But I'm sure you have a similar experience too. 
Now, we don't do this hurting on purpose, do we? We are good people. We do it because doing that, putting down somebody in front of others, gives us a moment of release from our own frustrations and failures. We ourselves, my family, are so broken sometimes and are in need of constant healing. But to counter that yucky feeling, we just lash out and hurt others as we feel vulnerable, exposed. And in today's world, oh my God, admitting our brokenness and need is seen as a weakness, isn't it? And a dark spot on our lives. But interestingly, being children of God, we are asked to continually exercise this critical discipline of asking for help when we need it to take others' help and extending our help to the needy and allowing God to heal our present and our past wounds. Taking His help to have a lifestyle of forgiving our present scars. If we do not allow for this, it will affect our future for sure. Without the allowance of the Holy Spirit working in us, we will continue to suffer on a day-to-day -day basis. So let me ask this question to each one of us, or rather, let's ask this question to our own selves. We yearn for grace from others, but do we realize that we need to extend the same grace to someone who does that to us, do we? Let's take a pause and think about this. Let's move on to the next stage, point number three of why we need to deal with our past wounds and present scars. There is a very dangerous next stage to this. Sometimes a past wound, sorry, yeah. Sometimes when a past wound or hurt, when left to fester or just left alone without bandaging or without putting the malam or the medicine on it, instead of developing a scab, it becomes infectious and starts to spread all over. Now, I am no medical doctor, my brothers and sisters, but I can firmly say that this is a medical fact. I'm sure if we ask the, the, the wonderful doctors that we have amongst us, Dr. Elizabeth, Dr. Leanne and Dr. Joshila, they will confirm the same. Similarly, if we have been wounded by our friends, family or colleagues, these wounds tend to start infecting our very being, clashing with our day-to-day -day lives and our abilities to be reasonable or to be objective. And without even realizing, we start to become angrier and angrier and bitter. And as days progress, we are hit with that reality that it's not easy to get past anger. Though we have told ourselves, ah, it's okay, after a few days I'll be okay, time heals everything. No. We also remember or rather are reminded of this because God doesn't want us to be that way, does he? But we feel helpless to avoid that feeling. Just one look at that person in question or one word from that person, whether it is good or bad, no matter how much we try and bottle those feelings, that anger just keeps erupting small, like small volcanoes. And before even we can stop ourselves, we go to the next stage of judging and condemning. Or the same is being done to us if we are the perpetrators. And this is why it is written in James 1.20 that human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. And we desire to be like whom? Like Him, right? This is why we need to deal with our past wounds and present scars. They can't be put aside. 
Now that we've understood the why, let's deal with how to deal with it. Yeah. So how number one, point number one. Our words matter. They do. We need to start being more mindful about the way we talk. Because the word of God says there is power in our tongue. Now our words have an ability to help someone, to heal someone's heart, to hinder, to hurt, to harm, to humiliate or even to humble others. And Proverbs 18.4 says exactly this. That a person's words can be life-giving water. Words of true wisdom are as refreshing as a bubbling brook. Proverbs 12.18 also says the same. That some people make cutting remarks. But the words of the wise bring healing. Now notice the Lord just didn't say be quiet and mum. It will pass on. Even if you see something wrong, don't speak about it. No, he is saying that words filled with wisdom bring healing and are refreshing. Now, since we are called to be blessings in each other's lives, let's choose to the best of our abilities to speak renewal and kindness, to speak love of Jesus, our Lord, into one another, despite what our human nature says. Or is telling otherwise. Let's resist the temptation of giving it back. Point number two of why or rather how to deal with this past uh, wounds and present scars. Our thinking and feelings matter. They do. When you are hurt, it's important that you acknowledge those feelings. Let us not go the world's way which says, Are, be a mature. You are a man. Buckle up. Or you are a successful one. Why are you crying? Suck it up. No, my brothers and sisters. It is important to take time off to understand and assess when we are hurt. And also to ask this, is there any truth in what was being said to you? Even though it's hurtful. If there is any truth to what was said to us, it's an excellent opportunity to correct ourselves, to avoid it being said to us again. Perhaps this is what exactly is Hebrews 12, 11 talking about. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later on, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So it's important. It is very important to correct and set ourselves right if we find there is a need for that. Let us not be those and say, Oh, you are, come, you are telling me I am wrong. No, no, you are wrong. Let us avoid that. It is good when we are called out. It is good to acknowledge and say, Yes, I am wrong in this. It requires a lot of patience and the help from Lord, but He gives it. It's also worth asking your inner circle of trusted, wise, discerning people to confide in and help you determine if what was said to you is truth or false. Let me say that again. It's also worth asking your inner circle of trusted, wise, and discerning people, meaning people who know the difference between right and wrong and who will help you determine if what was said, you got hurt, yes, but is there any truth to it or is it false? Now a big tip here, a big, big tip. Notice I said an inner circle of trusted, wise, discerning people. This inner circle should be a small one. The entire world cannot be in that and not all inner circle people will be discerning or understanding enough to tell us the truth as it is even when we are wrong now i know when we say inner circle what do we first get our parents our teachers maybe our pastors our siblings our friends 
Our Sunday school teachers, nothing wrong with having them in the inner circle. But not all of them will tell us the truth as it is. They love us so much, they think that if you tell us the truth that and call us out on our mistake, we will get hurt. To spare us those feelings, they become more encouraging and more, you know, but they don't call us out. So choose those who love you enough and are mature and wise to tell you the hard truth and help you when it hurts. And it will definitely hurt. And, but then who don't walk away, but will walk with you on that journey of correction and seeing the glory of the Lord. If you don't have such kind of mentors or wise trusted ones in your inner circle, start asking God to show you them. And this is a righteous desire, my brothers and sisters. God honors those kind of righteous desires. So getting back to our point. So SS, is that person who hurt you seeing things differently or maybe incorrectly? Can it be resolved with an open, honest discussion? Now, if the words were only spoken to you to hurt you, and it is false, it is not the truth about you, then as discussed before, they could just be projecting their own pain and insecurities on you to feel better. Now, it's not a great place to be in, nor should that kind of behavior be condoned. But reflecting in this way will give us you and me a chance to offer Christ-like grace upon that person. And this is good training for us and for our spiritual health. As it says in 1 Timothy 4.8, physical training, that means exercise, is good. But training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. You know, this verse has given me a new meaning in the light of the Bible studies that we've been doing about eschatology, about things that are to come at the end. Now here, see what, what is uh, 1 Timothy 4.8 saying? Training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come that we will have with Jesus in the fullness of his kingdom. Isn't that amazing and something to strive for? Now, giving grace is hard. I know that. And something that we don't always want to do. And it requires a lot of time and intentional spiritual disciplining to achieve that. But we ought to do it as it is required of us as followers of our ever-loving, grace-giving triune God. Now, point number three of how to deal with this. Remember, what was the first one? Can anyone open your audios and tell me what was the first part of how to deal with this? Our? A any, anyone remember taking notes? Just so that my internet is not stuck. Yes, so, yes please go ahead. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. So our words matter. It was the first one in how to deal. Second one was? Uh, take help. Our Pray. feelings and thinking matter. And now we go on to our third. Yeah. The third one is this. Our actions matter. The hardest thing of all of this is the spiritual discipline of forgiving. Our pain is real. Our wounds are real. Our scars are a painful reminder of a sad incident. No one can take that away from us. No one can say, my hurt is bigger than yours. We cannot compare. No one can do that. We know what we are feeling. But the fact is, sometimes the ones who hurt us don't even realize what they did. Because for them, it must be a very normal thing supported by their backgrounds or traditions. Or worse, they have misunderstood us and that's why assumed and said those things that they said or did those things that they did. Now, interestingly, a famous Dutch Christian writer called Corrie ten Boom writes this. 
Forgiveness is an act of the will and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Let's read that again what's on our screen. Forgiveness is an act of the will and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Now, what is the meaning of this? In layman terms, it is this. It's extremely hard to forgive. Extremely. And for others, impossible to forgive. It's unnatural even to forgive. Especially when someone really, really hurts us. Think of the widow of Graham Staines. We remember that incident, right? What did she do? She went ahead and she said that she forgives those very same people who sucked the joy of her life on earth by killing her family. But she went up and she said, I forgive them. And it was unnatural to the world, even for us. We felt it odd. How can she say that? Right? It's because, my family, God says to forgive. Whether it is forgiveness for others or forgiveness for our own selves. We can be so hard on our own selves sometimes. And forgiveness is extremely important to start the healing that comes from God alone. We can put medicine, we can put bandage, we can put everything and make the wound turn into a scar. But the real healing comes from our Lord alone. You know, people do a lip service of forgiving others, but they never let go. But true, genuine regret, forgiveness, repentance, while they are hard, liberates us from agony and a world of sin. I want us to watch this short video clip now. It's from a resource called as Theo Presents. Please pay attention to what Theo, the gentleman, says at the very end. Okay, so let's watch this short video. What's going on here? No. Belfry ate my wedge of cheese! And I said I was sorry! <coughs> yes. <coughs> now you two forgive each other and be Come friends. On. Animals, of course, have no idea what it means to forgive one another. I wonder sometimes if we humans do. Did you know that the word forgive means to set something free? So what did Theo say at the end? To forgive means to set free. That's what he said. Now I want to ask each one of us. What are we setting free? We are setting free our own guilt, our hurts that we've held on for so long, our pain and scars and those who caused us this pain. And But why should we set all of these free? Because my family in Christ, we never truly enjoy the liberty and freedom that we have in Jesus' salvation if we hold on to these very things which eat away internally the joy of the Lord. And his word says, the joy of the Lord is what? Any of the kids, any of you remember that verse? The joy of the Lord is our strength. 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 Amen. That is exactly what it says in Nehemiah 8.10. But many of us say, Are, I am so weak, yeah. I am not so strong like you, yeah. You are too bold and courageous. We hear of conversations like this, right? Why? Because we have pushed that joy from which we derive our strength to the back burner that Jesus gives us in the fullness of his glory Instead of grabbing it with both of our hands, we push it and we highlight these because we've not set them free. But remember, we are strong in Him. Forgiveness, my family, is not a sign of weakness as the world portrays. It is a show of tremendous courage 
and strength. And we can see that in the widow of Graham Stings, isn't it? Now this can be achieved only with the help of the Holy Spirit who gives us patience and humility and most of all reminds us on a daily basis that we must strive to do this because God desires that we treat our fellow human beings, those very same ones who hurt us, who caused us pain, exactly in the same way that Jesus has treated you and me. While we are still broken, his word says, he reached out to us, loved us first, even before we knew him. I've heard this beautiful phrase in many languages, but I'd like to say this in English here. It takes a bigger person to ask for forgiveness and it requires an even bigger person to forgive. Let me say that again. It takes a bigger person to ask for forgiveness and it requires an even bigger person to forgive. And this is what Ephesians 4.32 says, just as Pauline read before. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Now my family in Christ, forgiveness is an act of mercy and it is an obedience unto our Lord. It creates harmony which pleases the Lord and it is a sweet incense to him when people live in unity and in one accord. And we ourselves need grace constantly as we are sinful by nature and we cannot always be right, can we? We have many chains and shackles and we are guilty when we look deeper within ourselves today with regard to this topic. And this is why the Lord reminds us, for as often as we participate in the eating of the bread and the drinking of the cup, we do so proclaim the Lord's death until the day he comes back and his glorious resurrection. We proclaim, for through him alone, we are cleansed of all of this. We become worthy of his glory and all these shackles and chains that are holding us, not allowing us to experience the liberty, the joy that he has given us in him. We ought to be cleansed and become worthy of his glory and enjoy the benefits that he gives us through his salvation. This is why and how we deal with our scars and wounds. Now, inspired by a recent sermon from our president, Dr. Greg, I thought I'll use a few songs myself today. Songs that use scriptures to talk about today's topic. Since one of my favorite areas to serve is praise and worship, I thought I'll sing and remind you about scriptural songs which say like these. He is here and he is. He is here with you and me, my family, to heal the hopeless heart and bless the broken. Do you have a broken friendship? Do you have a broken relationship that you've gone so far apart and become indifferent maybe, or wondering how do I even close this gap, but you miss them? He is here to heal us. Or this song, which says, My chains are gone, I've been set free. My Lord, my Savior, has ransomed you and me. Amazing love, unending grace. Oh, you are still hurting with somebody, about somebody, from somebody, or you've hurt someone. This song reminds us. Are you hurting and broken within? 
Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, one of my favorites that Uncle Zach touched upon in the last Wednesday. Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. Who is he, my family? Who is he? He is our all-encompassing, our ever-loving, grace-abounding, redeeming counselor friend. That is why today I want to encourage you and ask you to trust me and do this activity with me and your families. Now I know I may be asking much of you, but this could be the day, the very day that the Lord has touched your heart and the Spirit is ministering to you, calling you out and bringing to light certain hidden things, things that you suppressed in your heart maybe. His presence is among us. He is watching you right now where we are in the state of mind, in the state of heart that we are. So I want to request you, my family, please go ahead and close your eyes. We are going to approach the throne of grace just as we are. We are specifically going to pray for each one of us. We will not be looking at our screens to see what others are doing. You can even go on and hold hands with your family members if they are beside you. I ask that you just listen to my voice, ponder and let the Holy Spirit speak to you to agree and to pray over yourself. If you are uncomfortable doing this with open video, I encourage you, please go ahead and close your video but stay in this attitude of prayer. Go ahead, reflect upon yourselves. Bow down before our Lord, your maker. Please do so now and listen and then pray if you find yourself in one of these categories I give you. Category number one. If you know of someone who has hurt you, small, big, long before, or recently, a close family member, friend, or at work, and you have not yet approached that person, and they might not have realized it yet. But as the world said, we have swept it under the rug, but we still feel pain interacting with that person. I want you to commit that person into the Lord's hand. I want you to acknowledge your hurt before our Lord and ask for help from our gracious triune God to help you forgive that person or to let go of that hurt that is holding you back from enjoying the freedom that you and I have in Christ. Category number two, ask God to help show you the areas where you have hurt others knowingly or unknowingly and have lost a friendship or strained a relationship. And once you become aware, ask for God's forgiveness and courage to later on go in all grace and humility, to find time to meet with that person and have an honest, open discussion and talk as that's the right thing to do. With the Lord's help, your relationship will have been restored and reconcile, even though it takes time and effort, at the end, you will see the glory of the Lord. Category number three, if you are still dealing with fresh wounds, I am saying, ask God today, 
ask God to heal you emotionally and mentally. Category number four. If you have reminding scars which pull you back five steps every time you take two steps ahead, derailing your walk with the Lord and making you feel undervalued and unworthy, ask God today specifically to give you His strength and joy of salvation, to let go of all that is holding you back. Please go ahead, my family, and pray now over yourself and with your family, I encourage you. Let's take, take this two minutes to pray. And then Mr. Nirale will come and pray for us as a big family. Let's take this one moment to just pray. Let us remain in the attitude of prayer as we continue prayer together. And I just want to encourage from Psalm 119, verse 50, and it says, In all my affliction, I find great comfort in your promises, for they, kept, they have kept me alive. Indeed, gracious Father, we come before you with thanksgiving. For because of your comfort and your love, you have given us great strength to go through our past scars and pains. And as we have went through the process of accepting, realizing, and overcoming that by forgiving, O Lord, today we bring forward every small thing, every big thing that has uh, kept us locked, that has kept us slave uh, to, to our memories. Oh Lord. And today, I pray, give us strength, give us strength of our Father, that we may be able to forgive others on the things that we are still holding on to, oh Lord so that we may experience your true love and experience that freedom, O oh Lord, that we get in forgiving others as you have forgiven us, O oh Lord. And as we experience your true love and your comfort and your grace in everything, O oh Lord, allow us to see that in our relationship everywhere. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, our Father. We continue to pray. Let your Holy Spirit, in every moment in the coming days, reveal us, O oh Lord. Remind us, O oh Lord, the areas where we need to work. We want to thank you, Lord, that despite our weakness, despite our shortcoming, 
yet you forgive us and yet you love us, O oh Lord. And such is your unconditional love that we receive. And help us, Lord, to spread that love horizontally as we receive from you. We want to thank you and bless you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. My family in Christ, may you find healing today for any wounds or scars you've been carrying, whether big or small. And may you receive freedom and joy from your broken chains as a result of God's presence, healing and mercy. May the good Lord give you courage, guide your steps to do everything within your power to bridge those gaps and bring him honor and to win back relationships if possible for his glory. May you find his peace that passes all understanding in your hearts. I leave you with this verse now, which says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you and me is just and faithful to carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Be blessed.